Logo design is deceptively difficult because the best logos are often really minimalist. Hi creatives, today we take a deep dive into logo design. First, we'll look at everything that makes a really good logo, looking at dynamic and responsive logos, lockups, icons, and how to create a really balanced design. Then I'll take you along on a real client project that I worked on recently, and I'll show you how I came up with everything from the concepts, picking the ones to go with, and creating really finished, polished designs to show to my clients. If you already feel really comfortable with all the basics of logo design, you can skip ahead to the actual design phase. I'll make sure to put this timestamp here on the screen and also down in the description. You might have heard the phrase, a logo is identification, not communication. Meaning that your logo should help identify the company and not try to explain what the business does. I mostly agree with this and many of the logos that we see as timeless and really successful, they are very minimal. The benefit of this is that they're able to take on meaning and they can grow with the company even if they change their business model or what they sell. So think about how hard it would be for a beauty company that decided to have a comb as their logo to keep that logo if they expanded to clothing or other products. I do also want to offer a slightly different perspective on this. I think there are a lot of really strong logos that are quite literal, but that do work for those businesses. One really good example is the WWF logo that has the panda as the symbol of conservation. The panda icon was inspired by Chi Chi, which was a famous giant panda that was in the public eye when the WWF started. The panda icon it serves both as a great way to tell the story and as a way to put more of a cute and engaging face to conservation, which can be a really heavy topic. Although we don't want the logos to be too literal, we do want them to create and evoke that feeling that the brand represents. One of the most successful examples of this that I think of always and come back to in my projects is the Mind logo. Mind work with mental health and this tangled line, it's such a great image to represent mental health and mental health issues. There are many different types of logos that you can create and they all have slightly different functions and benefits. So let's have a look at some of those. A word mark. A word mark or logo type is when the stylized name of the company acts as the logo. This is really common for more corporate brands and it helps build fast brand recognition because people can instantly connect with a brand with that name altogether. Pictorial mark. Just as it sounds, this is when an illustration acts as the logo. You can think of brands like Apple or Twitter for this, but it could also be like a hunting company having a bear and a mountain as their mark. This type of logo can become very iconic, but it often takes a lot of money to build up that brand awareness. Abstract mark. An abstract mark works just like the pictorial mark, but it's trying to represent the values of the brand rather than depict the name or a specific illustration. You can also have mascots, emblems, monograms, or a combination mark. And often we also combine a word mark with a pictorial or abstract icon. But this is when it gets interesting. Have you ever heard of dynamic or responsive logos? Every business has so many different places where their logo appears. From a super small social media icon or even the website favicon to a billboard ad the size of a building. So a good logo needs to work well on all of those different scales. So how do we solve this? Let's start with responsive logos. Responsive logos have different versions depending on the size. In other words, they respond to the size just like responsive web design changes for mobile or desktop, for example. In a larger format, you can use the most complex version, while in a smaller format, you use a simplified version or even an icon. Brands like Disney and Kodak are really great examples of this. Dynamic logos can adapt to the context of the design, like switching up the exact icon to match each location of a chain or change to fit the adult or children's part of a brand, for example. The last thing before we actually start designing together is to have a look at what it means to create different lockups. This is really closely related to dynamic and responsive logos. Lockups are just different layouts where we combine the logo with more information, like a tagline, date the company was established, or the location, for example. Playing around with lockups is a great way to add more personality to your designs and you can quickly make something feel a bit more retro or really modern just by your layout, illustration and typography combinations. Now that we know a lot more about logos and what makes them effective and valuable to clients, let's start designing. The brand we'll design for today is an inclusive leadership coaching business that I worked with recently. 
Their name is Samsas, which means to collaborate and get along in Swedish. Before we start creating, I want to show you the mood boards that we created to give you an idea of the direction that a design should go. We show the client these mood boards and they decided to mostly go with this one. They felt like the other directions were a little bit too safe and they wanted something a little bit more energetic. I want to make sure that we bring out the friendly feeling that the mood board has while also making the logo really flexible for different applications like social media posts and their website. The first step when I start creating logo concepts is to have a look at the discovery meeting and see if there are any words that they use to describe their brand that I can use as a kickoff point for my ideas. In this case, they wanted the brand to feel personal, inclusive, collaborative, open and responsive. So I use these words as a starting point and I create a kind of mind map. From each word, I try to think of visual ways to portray that idea. As we talked about in the beginning of the video, we don't want the logo to literally show what the company does, but we want to represent the feeling that they want to create. When I look at these words, I think about a lot of circles and how different shapes can come together to form something better together. This works well with both the inclusive and collaborative vision, and it also feels quite friendly, which I think is a good bonus. You can continue like this until you feel like you have enough ideas to start sketching. At least for me, having this kind of prompt list makes it a lot less intimidating to start sketching because you're not starting with a blank piece of paper. I usually sketch on paper or I might use Procreate on my iPad, but I try to stay away from starting straight in Illustrator. This helps me be a little bit less of a perfectionist and explore more different ideas. We always want to work in black and white first to make sure that the logo is flexible. For some size, I really wanted to play with the idea of the circles coming to form some type of Venn diagram because the overlap implies that something interesting is happening in that meeting. So I'm testing out different ideas and ways to use the circle and just look for things that happen on purpose or by accident that I find look interesting. The second concept I really like is the idea of everyone being unique and how that brings value to a team. So I want to try some more organic shapes and see how that feels. I think we can also try more geometric shapes, but have them balance and create a more of a playful interactive feeling. I'd also like to try some version of a monogram or an icon based on the first letter. So I'm going to try and mix the idea of being responsive and having a flexible path with the letter S. Lastly, I like the idea of growth together, so I want to try some ideas related to progress or growth as a team. Great, so now that we have a bunch of ideas, it's time to pick our favorites. I look for ideas that have a strong concept, but they're also not too complicated, so I move forward with these designs. The next step is to create more polished versions in Adobe Illustrator and essentially test how practical these logos are. I like to use a combination of the shape builder tools, the pathfinder tools and the pen tool to create a really clean and balanced design. You can also duplicate and reflect elements to make sure that you get absolute symmetry in your designs. We want to use Illustrator rather than Photoshop because Illustrator works with vectors, which means that your design is never pixelated. You can just export a version in the right format for your client and the logo will look good at one centimeter or at 10 meters large. So you can see that I tried a lot of versions of these overlapping circles. And although I still really like the idea, the lines are always too thin from far away. And this is why you want to experiment in Illustrator and test out your ideas. If I make them thicker, they lose that definition or I can't see the concept anymore. So I'm actually gonna move away from this concept. The more organic shapes are interesting, but I don't feel like they are serious enough for this company. It feels a little bit too playful. The S icon is very symmetrical and I find it quite satisfying, but it feels more relevant to like a sports brand or maybe apparel. These two feel a bit too harsh with their square designs and not as friendly as I would like. So I'll narrow it down to these two designs. And now that I'm looking at them, I want to change the outline to a filled in version and see how that will work. Okay, this is much better. Now we have a clear and visible design that can take on meaning and is not too literal, but we still have that idea of growth and how inclusion makes everything better and improved. Next, we'll look at a good typeface to go with the abstract icon and see how we might want to customize the letters to work better. Since the brand should feel modern and a little bit unique still, I want to look for a typeface that has a very classic and lasting impression, 
but just with something that makes it a little bit different. My usual places to find typefaces for logos are Adobe Typekit and Envato Elements, but I sometimes like to look at foundries when I need something very special. And I found this one typeface called Mars Sans, and you can download a sample to test it out. I really like how it balances that unique and established line, and I do think it works really well with the mark. I can always use the icon by itself, the word mark by itself, or a combination, but I also like to try different lockups to see if they could be useful for the company. In this case, I think my client will have enough flexibility just from the three combinations here, so I'll keep it simple, but they are able to use the logo as a cutout and play around with the branding that way, so I will include that. Now that I have my finished design concept, I start putting together a presentation to show to my clients. And here I want to make sure that I'm really showing the different practical applications of the logo. If you want to see how you can do that, you can watch this video about how to create a brand pitch presentation for your clients. I really hope you thought this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.